All right, guys. So in this activity, we're going to be dealing with the Windows 10 client operating system. Our tasks for user account management here are first, we're going to configure the, the built in administrator account. After that, we're going to create a named local user account. Then we're going to add that local user account to a built in group called power users that power users account is pretty special what it does is it allows limited administrative access to um, a uh, system <clears throat> so it's not a full admin but they can still do things like install software and then the fourth uh task here is we're going to uh, set a local we're going to set the local account security policy for that that named user account that we make we're going to set it so that the password has to be changed every 60 days. All right. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go down to our Windows 10 taskbar here. I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to do it. I'm going to search for this PC and then I'm going to go to manage. So that's going to bring up a tool called computer management. Another way we can get to that is by going to the Windows icon, right clicking on it and then going to computer management. There's always like in Windows or in most operating systems, there's always like three or four ways to get to, to everything. So now I got this computer management uh, MMC console. It's basically like a collection of tools. Uh, we talked about this when we were uh, in class, but in this collection of tools, one of the tools available is this local users and groups um, uh, plugin. Here on the users, uh, the user folder. This is where we actually can create user accounts. So, and we can see some of the built in ones. So I see this, that there's an administrator account. This is the built in admin account. Uh, it's already there. Um, mine is already administratively up. Yours might be down. So if the way to tell that it's administratively down or been, been turned off is if it has a little, uh, black arrow inside of a white circle and a black arrow is pointing down. That means the, the account's been turned off um, and it's there, but it's not active. In order to activate the, your administrator account, you have to give it a password. So you'll go to that account. If you double click on it, then you'll be able to see that, okay, there's an area where I can assign a password. Or if you right click on it and say set password, then you'll get this this screen is kind of like a warning and then you'll proceed and then it'll let you create a password for it. I've already created a password on this account, so it's good to go. But you're going to to enable that administrator account, set a password on it, and then uh, it should come up to a upstate. That little symbol should disappear. So that's your first thing you're going to create. We're going to um, set up that administrator account. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to create a named user account. I have one already here, but I'm going to create a new one now. So still on this users uh, with this users folder selected, I'm going to go to the action menu. I'm going to go to all tasks. Oh, sorry, um, not the action menu. I'm going to right click on the area for that specific uh, you in this uh, open area under the users folder. And I'm going to say new user. It's going to give me this new user template to type information into. I'm going to give it a username. Let's call this. You'll, you'll probably just do your first initial and last name. I've already done that. So I'm just going to create an account called test user. Test user one and test. <laughs> is it uh, test user one is also the full name in this case. If you want to give it a description, you could do that, um, but not necessary. It's not a required element. Uh, then you're going to set a password on it. And confirm that password. Now, uh, as an admin, one of the things that we typically do when we create these uh, passwords, we want them to act as temporary passwords uh, because we want to provide a level of security for the user, uh, meaning that we want them to be the only one who actually knows their actual password. So by keeping this first checkbox checked, user must change password at next login, we can help 
create that more secure environment. This password that I just typed in would then just become a temporary password that I would hand off to the to the employee to the user and then when they log in with it for the first time as long as this user must change password that next login box is checked that user will be prompted after their first login to change it to something that they are that only they should know um, for our purpose of practice though we're going to go ahead and uncheck that um, and that enables some additional options there's an option that says user cannot change password this comes in handy if you have like a service account and i'm setting up a service account and i check that uh and is not, nobody's going to be able to log in with this that maybe the system is going to use this account then i don't want that password changing so i can check that user cannot change password um, there's an option that says password never expires. So if I have rules, security, like the security policy we're going to set up that says, you know, password has to change every 60 days. This will override that rule because password never expires. And then if I want to administratively turn this account off, then I can check this box here that says account is disabled. So I'm going to hit create. I'm going to I check account is disabled. It went away. It brought me back to this blank prompt. That means it, it was successful. Uh, if I close that out, I see that there's a new account there that test user one and is administratively down. I'm going to turn it back on. I just wanted to demonstrate that, uh, you know, how you would turn that account off to get back in there to turn that uh, to turn this account on. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go to its properties and then I can uncheck that account is disabled. Um, so if you recall, when we talked about uh, protecting user accounts and we talked about you know an instance where maybe we're off board an employee and we don't get rid of their account immediately because maybe there's some useful information in there that we might need later on well one of the ways that we can keep that account alive but make it so that nobody can get into it is we can come into this user if it's a local user account we can come into this user uh, management area here and we can disable administratively disable the account by just checking that checkbox uh, unticking it enables the account notice that the little arrow went away so now this account is good to use um, but if we right click on it and again look at the properties and we go to the tab right now we're on a general tab but if we go to this member tab notice that it's only a member of the users group so this is like the most basic group that you could possibly have on a Windows machine. Uh, this is the the bare minimum standard user account. You can't really do anything with it besides like log in and do and manage your own personal stuff. We want this user to be able to do some things for themselves, though, install software, stuff like that. So we need to make it a member of the power users group. That's our third uh, task. So I'm going to add I'm going to um, on this members members of tab i'm going to hit the add button and i get this little select group tool now if you know what the name of the tool name of the group that you want to you know uh add this user to is then you can just type it in here but if you're not from if you're not sure exactly what the name of the group and maybe you want to uh, maybe you know part of the group name but you don't know exactly how it's you know worded or spelled out or what have you you can there's a search feature um so first thing we want to do is going to make sure we're looking for the right thing up here at the top it says select this object type is set the group that's what we're looking for we're looking for groups but if we weren't we could hit this object types button and if there were some additional things we could search for they would show up here and we could just check mark them the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure we're looking in the right place this is looking in location. The only location that's going to be available here is the local machine because this this computer, this uh, VM that I'm working on is not a um, is not domain joined. It's not on a network. So the only place I can look is on this local machine. And then this last one checks the name. If I type a name in, it'll try to find it. But if I want a more thorough search, I'll click this advanced button and it opens up this search tool. I'm just going to I'm not. I'm not even going to try to attempt to find, you know, type anything in there. That's why it's grayed out. I'm just going to hit find now. And it's going to find all of the available groups that are on this system. And there's my power user group. I'll select it and hit OK. Now power users has been added into that list. If I hit OK now, 
you see power users that this member this uh test user account that I just made is now also a member of the power users group and because of that is now inherited all of the permissions of power user so I'll hit apply and then I'll hit okay and now test user has some uh some authority on this system they can actually do some things and then the last thing that we're going to do with this test user account is we're going to set up a well not just the account we're going to set up a local security policy for all of these uh accounts on the system that says that uh every 60 days you need to change your password so we can close this tool out we're going to go to the search here and we're going to uh and we're going to search for local security policy that's going to give us this local security policy tool click into it and it launches and then one of the options i get inside a local security policy is account policies so these are my account policies and then under account policies i have password policies and then i have uh account lockout policies I want to look at the password policies and then under underneath of password policies, you see that there is a policy for uh, ma uh, maximum password age. Right now it's set to 42 days, but the, our task was to make that 60. So we're going to hit to change that to 60 days if you're not sure what the policy does these all these policies have a tab for explain you click on that and it'll give you a synopsis of what the policy does here it says this security setting determines the period of time in days that a password can be used before the system requires the user to change it so that's exactly what we were looking for we the default c was 42 we just made it 60 so then we'll hit apply we hit okay and now that password policy has been set to a maximum password age of 60 days. All right. So your deliverable and you'll this will be in the lab, um, the lab assignment notes, too. But your deliverable for this particular activity is to give me a screenshot of each one of those completed tasks. So I should say I have a screenshot of the administrator account without the uh, administratively down arrow I should have a screenshot of your local user account that you've created I should have a screenshot of the group membership of that local account showing that power users is now uh, is now one of the groups that that new account is a member of and then I should have a screenshot showing that the local security policy on the system is 60 days all of those screenshots can be uh, wrapped up into one document if you like, just give it a title of Windows 10 task list. And as a matter of fact, for all of the all of the four systems that you'll be working with, you can consolidate all of their screenshots.